So last night, the Penguins played game one of their series against Philadelphia. They jumped out to a 3-0 lead on goals by Crosby, Kennedy, and Dupuy. And they lost 4-3 in overtime. That means they're losing in a best-of-seven series one game to none. I am of the opinion that the Penguins are the best team, probably, at least in the East. You can't say the Bruins are better than the Penguins because the Penguins have owned the Bruins this year. You can't say the Rangers are better than the Penguins because the Penguins have owned the Rangers this year. But you might be able to say the Flyers are better than the Penguins. That's not easy to say. Being a Penguins fan, it's tough. But they were 4-1 and one against the Pens this year. You can't count that last game as anything other than an aberration because it didn't count for anything. It was a personal statistic game. I think last night, before the Penguins even scored their third goal, it seemed like Philadelphia was picking up momentum. The Penguins getting the goal didn't seem to really deter the momentum at all. I know a lot of people are complaining about the offsides on Briere's goal. But Briere was going to be in whether he was onside or offside. And that was only the first goal. Breaks happen in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's how teams win. Sometimes they need those breaks. Think back, Penguin fans, to 2009. Two breaks. Not just the six men on the ice against Detroit that wasn't called. But on the first goal of Game 7 against Detroit, that was icing. That's why the defensemen for the Detroit Red Wings let up, and that's what allowed the puck to come loose for Talbot to score the goal. <laughs> as far as the other goals, they were clean. There was something that really bugged me about the way Brooks Orpik played in that third period. The Penguins had had three power play opportunities, which, by the way, they squandered very badly. I don't know how many shots they had, but it had to be somewhere around uh, none. Most of them went wide. Others were bad passes that were picked off and cleared. So the Flyers get a power play opportunity because Brooks Orpik decides he's going to hit a guy. Why? When you know it's a one goal game in the playoffs and you know You've had every power play opportunity. You know you have to keep your body and your stick as clean as you can against the opposition. Orpik has been playing for going on nine years. He knows better. And you ask him now, he'll say probably he knows better. Shouldn't have hit Briere. Now, interference, I'm not so sure about the interference, but... That was an unnecessary hit. It was. And they can't kill the power play. They can't kill it. Philadelphia scores. One trance, one goal. And at that point, there's seven minutes left in the game. But the Penguins were done. They were done. In the final 22 minutes, they had five shots on goal. Going into overtime, the Penguins put out their checking line. Why? Why would you put out your checking line at the beginning of overtime? Don't you want to try to win? Not saying that the third line can't score a goal, but can't the first? Can't the second? That's your scoring lines. Went over the goal again this morning, the, the game winner, and I paused it just before Voracek got a stick on it. Three Penguins standing looking at the puck. Latang looking at the puck. Stahl sees the puck. Stahl's got pterodactyl arms. He can't beat Voracek to the puck. He 
half-heartedly reached at it. If you didn't think the penguins wanted to get out of there as quick as possible, just check the post-game news conferences. Six penguins. Six. Talked to the press. The rest were gone. That's all my thoughts on that particular game. Because it is just one game. I know better than to get freaked out about one game. But I'm just so disgusted at how poorly they played from the second period on. And even before they scored the third goal, they were starting to let it get away. Because the reason that we all seem to think they're going to win the Stanley Cup isn't because they have Crosby and Malcolm, but because the whole team plays playoff hockey. And they didn't. And they haven't for a couple weeks now. I don't know if they're just going to all of a sudden snap a switch, but we're going to have to. Philadelphia is just... The thing that won the game for Philadelphia last night was that they kept moving. There were times when the Penguins were standing still. On the first breakaway that Breer had, the offside breakaway, Orpik is standing flat-footed on his blue line. I don't care if he thinks the puck is going towards the Philly zone. He can't stand flat-footed. At all. You have to keep moving. And this is all stuff I'm sure they'll address because they're a professional hockey team and I'm some shlomo sitting in a chair wearing a Latestu shirt. Pretty sure he doesn't play for us anymore. So I'm sure they'll fix the problems. I'm just saying that last night was bad. And hopefully when we look back on this, we won't really look back on this game. It'll just, but we'll just brush it aside. But if they keep playing like this, that's not the way it's going to be. And that's a problem. I still say Pens in six. And in order for the Pens to win in six, they have to lose two games. One of them is done. They have very little margin for error. They need to win this next game. I believe they will. I believe they'll learn from the lessons that they should have learned from from this game. But maybe they won't. Uh -huh, God damn right, it's a beautiful day. Uh -huh, God damn right, it's a beautiful day.